I was born in Charlottesville, Virginia. My grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson. My grandfather was 115 years old when he died. And now I am 101 years old. That's enough. You just go ahead and talk away there. You don't <laughs> mind, do you, Uncle Fountain? Who did you work for, Uncle Fountain? When... Who did I work for? Yeah. But I, you mean when I was a slave? Yeah, when you were a slave, who did you work for? Well, I belonged to um, uh, Burnley's when I was a slave. My mother belonged to Burnley's when I was a Burnley died during the war time because uh, he was afraid he'd have to go to war. But uh, now, you, in them days, you could hire a substitute to take your place. Well, he couldn't get a substitute to take his place, so he ran away from home, and he took cold. And when he come back, the war was over, but he died. And then, uh, if he had lived, it wouldn't have been no good. The Yankees just come along and, and just broke the mill open, and rolled all the flour out in the river, and broke the, broke the stove, and sold all the meat out in the street, and sold all the sugar out. And we, we boys would pick it up and carry it and give it to our middle missus and master, young masters, and, until we come to be... Well, I don't know how. I don't know to tell you the truth. When I think of it today, I don't know how I am living. The slave master felt that these were people, but they were only meant to walk for the needs of the slave master. Have them work in plantations upon which his economy depended, cotton or rice, indigo, anything the, the slaves could work in order to make money for the, for the country, particularly the southern state. So it was a very, very terrible situation to which the African-American people or the African people had to cope with. Well, the economic system of America, which is capitalist system, actually was nurtured as a result of the profits of slavery. If for 200 years you have somebody working for you, sun up, sun down, without any payment, the profit and the benefits financially and otherwise will be huge and tremendous. So I believe the United States and many of those people who perpetrated slavery are still benefiting from it today. Well, whether we get acknowledged or not, it is a noted fact that African people worked here as slaves for several hundred, for, for several hundred years Eventually, they, they were emancipated, but the hurt, psychological, emotional, is still a legacy of African-American people. The slave himself psychologically felt that uh, he was being exploited, but he was determined to survive so that his own children's children would see a day like this. So, he was determined to survive because deep down in his heart, he knew what was being done to him was wrong. But however, he had to endure it, and he endured it just so that today will be a, a good day for his descendants. A typical day will be getting up 5 o'clock in the morning from a dead floor, eat whatever scraps of food there was, and go and work in the field all day. Then in the evening, come back and try to secure or cater for some more scraps of food to eat. But psychologically, he was strong. Emotionally, he was strong. He wanted to see the day when his descendants would be lawyers, as you have seen today, doctors, as you have seen today, uh, teachers, as you have seen today, and now a president. 
It was part of human destiny. It was a dint of destiny. It happened. And uh, it's been addressed. Of course, there is still more than this slavery. It's happening all over the world, but it's not as bad as the one that was being practiced here in North America and in the Caribbean. The time has come to reaffirm our enduring spirit, to choose our better history, to carry forward that precious gift, that noble idea passed on from generation to generation, the God-given promise that all are equal, all are free, and all deserve a chance to pursue their full measure of happiness.